I see this screen okay? Yeah. Not too bright, not too dark. Okay, so the very first property we're talking about is the commutative property. We call it uh, CP for short, so I'm going to write that out to the side there. Commutative property is the CP property. And there's two different ways the commutative property can work. It can work with addition and multiplication. Addition is most likely simplified by an A and multiplication by M. So if you see CPA, that means commutative property of addition, or CPM, that means the commutative property of multiplication, okay? It only works with these two because it keeps equivalency the same. Denver, you got to wake up, baby. The lesson done started. So looking at this, the commutative property is read as if A plus B equals B plus A. If A plus B equals B plus A. Multiplication is if A times B equals B times A. What happened here? Can you see the actual property? What happened between this side and this side? Yes, ma'am. They flip-flopped, right? So all it did was flip the numbers. That's what we're going to write down here. So it flipped the numbers, or it flips the numbers. Commutative, flip them. Does not change the outcome. So if I'm looking at this and I gave you the example, what is 5 plus 2? What's 5 plus 2? 7. Kylan, wake up, baby. You're missing the lesson, honey. What is 2 plus 5? So does 7 still equal 7? Yes or no? Yeah, yeah. Yes. So did the actual position of the 5 and 2 matter in this case? No. No. Nope. Let's look at the multiplication. So what if I gave you 2 times 3? What's 2 times 3? Six. What is 3 times 2? Does 6 still equal 6? So is that still true even if I switched it? No. That's how commutative property works. Any questions there? Associative property, or just AP for short, is read as A plus B plus C equals A plus B plus C as addition, and then multiplication is read as A times B times C equals A times C times B. What happened here? Did they? Did it? What was the change? You just said, what? Not quite. You're close though. You said a word that I was waiting for you to say. So what actually happened from here to here? Did they change the order of anything? Did they change the order of anything? No. What did they change? The letters. Not the letters. Not quite. Without focusing on what you're trying to think about, does A, B, and C still sit in the same places? Yes. Yes, they do. A is still at the front. B is still in the middle. C is still at the end. Is that the case on this side? Yep. So what did change? The parentheses. That's it. Can the same thing be said over here? Let's highlight those parentheses. What was it around at the beginning? And where did it go around at the end? But did the placement of A, B, and C change? No. no, they're still in the same order. So what was these parentheses around over here? The ones I just highlighted. What are they around? And they went around which two? 
but did the order of the letters change? No. So, associated property only changes the parentheses. It should not change anything else. And we're going to prove that. So, if I were to plug in 2 plus 1 plus 3, and then do the same thing on this side. So, 2 plus 1 plus 3. Grab your calculator for me. We're going to type in only this right, this left-hand side right here. So parentheses 2 plus 1, close parentheses, plus 3. That's all we're typing in. Don't say anything out loud yet. Give your people time to write and get this typed in, okay? Sorry, I'm covering over the word parentheses. My bad. Kylan, baby, you got to grab a clipboard. This is the third time I didn't woke you up. Go on and grab a clipboard. Stand up for a second. What do we write it in? Hmm? What do we write it in? What do you mean, baby? You, you, you just say like... Mm -hmm. it just type it in. We're going to see it together. What did you end up getting? Six. Now type in the other side. Two plus parentheses, one plus three, close parentheses. What did y'all get? So, did the placement of the parentheses change anything? No, it was still exactly the same. Do you see why this property works? Yes? Good. So, the same thing can be said over here. I'm going to keep the exact same numbers. All I'm going to do is change my plus signs to multiplication. So, I have 2 times 1 times 3 equals 2 times 1 times 3. You're writing this down, um, Jordan, but you're not writing down the actual numbers. I'm just showing you that it's equivalent in the calculator. So once you do that, get that typed in. What'd you get? Now type in the other side. Are they still the same? So does the parentheses matter in this case? Denver, baby, you got to lean up. Can you tap her for me? Denver, look at me right here, okay? Listen to me. If you're going to sleep, you got to grab a clipboard. That's the second time. Kylan, that's the third time. This is all being recorded, so it's all being documented. We are not sleeping in class. We are in here for a reason. I understand if your weekend was long, but your obligation is to be here and to do your best in class. You can't do your best if you're sleeping. Do I make myself clear? Do I make myself clear to everybody else? Yes. Because if I'm here teaching you the lesson and I'm giving you the time and effort to do so, the least you can do is pay attention to the lesson itself. Any questions? What's the word of the year? Respect. respect. What's the word of the year? Respect. So show respect by sitting up, waking up, and paying attention. This is the last little bit. I'm going to be nice about it. Any questions? Thank you. Identity property. This is called IDP. The reason why we have to put that there is because we also have the inverse property that exists as well. So we have to put this middle letter here so you know it's identification. So ID, identity property. This also goes with addition and multiplication. What do you notice when we say A plus zero equals A? What do you think is happening here? It stays the same. What happens when A times 1 equals A? 
it stays the same. So the way that we say this one is the original number does not change. So you can plug any number in for A. I'm going to do 10. What is 10 plus 0? What is 10 times 1? You can also use fractions for these as well, and it still should be true. Any questions there? No. Inverse property. That's I-N-P. Inverse means the opposite, the opposite. So I was going to help out with this one because we're still learning vocabulary, and that's a big vocabulary word that goes into Algebra 1. So the goal is the opposite cancels out. So if I'm looking at, say, 4. What's the opposite of 4? 2. No. Negative 4. So let's type this into our calculator. So it's 4 plus a negative 4. So what'd you get? Zero. It doesn't matter what number you use. It doesn't matter if it's a decimal, if it's a fraction, if it's rational or if it's irrational. If you add it by its opposite, it should cancel out. So I need you to type this in for me. Type in the square root of two. Plus the opposite of the square root of two. If yours doesn't look like mine when you type it in, type it in exactly the way I typed it, okay? You have to use that right arrow here. Yes, ma'am? Like Maybe not, because if you're doing it correctly, it should do exactly what we want it to do. Make sure you type it in exactly as you see it. So it's, it should be, right? because we just took the opposite of that number. That's it. So bring me your calculator, Jordan. Let me see what you did. Uh, how do I like, re-pull it in? I don't know how I got it wrong. Um, Cause look at yours and look at mine. You see how yours extended all the way over? That's not what you want. Mm -mm. So this is how we fix that. We delete all of this. And we hit the right arrow. You see how it stops it there? Mm -hmm. Then you hit plus, parentheses, negative, square root of 2. But you have to hit the right arrow to get out of it. You have to hit this. Make sense? Yeah. Now hit enter on that and tell me what you got. I got zero. You got zero as well? Did everybody get zero there? Um, Do you see yes. how it's still true? Yes. Let's do it with one more number, okay? So type in one half plus negative one half. Parentheses, one divided by two, because it's just a division. Mm -hmm. I didn't say the answer. Don't say the answer yet. Give everybody time. I tried not to say the answer, Zetarian, just to give y'all space. But I was explaining to him how to type it in. That's it. Hang on, give him a second now. What'd y'all get? Zero. It should have been zero as well. How you type it in matters, okay? <laughs> Type it in precisely and double check it, okay? Yes. Any questions there? No. Now let's look at the multiplication side. We read this as A times 1 over A equals A over A, and when you divide anything by itself, it becomes 1. So I'm going to give you the number 2. So we have 2 times 1 over 2.
which then becomes 2 over 2, which changes into 1. Now, if you recall, the very first two lessons I taught you was how to add, subtract, multiply, and divide fractions. Do you remember that? How do I turn 2 into a fraction? By putting it over 1. And with multiplication, do I just multiply across? Yes. What's 2 times 1? Two. What's 1 times 2? Two? 2. What's anything divided by itself? 0. 1. one. 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 So, typing this in, this is how you're going to type it in to check it. It's 2 times... 1 half, that's it. 2 times 1 half. I got 1. Isn't that what you're supposed to get? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Can I do this with any number? Yes. Sure can. So let's do 3 over 2 times. What would be the in, the reciprocal of 3 over 2? Mm -mm. Not the opposite, the reciprocal. What does that mean? What is reciprocal? <gasps> You've heard this word before, but I know you don't remember the context in which you heard it. So we're going to talk about it really fast. Reciprocals come from when you're looking at a fraction or a ratio and you take the exact opposite as it pertains to the position of the numbers, not the actual number on the number line. So, it wouldn't be negative, but it would be what? Do you know, Annabelle? 2 over 3. Just say it out loud, baby. The worst thing I'm going to say is, no, let's look at it differently, okay? Oh, so it's backwards. It flips, but it does not change the sign. So, what did you get? 1. one. That's the inverse. Inverse and reciprocal go hand in hand. Any questions? The context in which you heard the phrase reciprocal was used mainly when you talked about similarities between triangles in 7th and 8th grade. That was your geometric unit. It was a long time ago for some of us in the sense of talking about it. Because some teachers like to talk about it pretty early on. Um, but some teachers talk about it at the very end of the year. So it all depends on the pacing and who you got. But you should have seen it in some way or another. So, zero property of multiplication, it's ZPM. ZPM. What do you think this property is telling me? Anything times zero is zero. Let's write that down. That's perfect. I could put any number up in there. I'm gonna put pi. Typing this in the calculator. How do I get pi? Do you know? S second. And the caret key, right? So it's this button right here that gives you your other exponents underneath clear. If you hit second in that button, it brings pi up. Wait, second in what? Second in the caret key, which is right underneath clear times zero. What, um, it's second, the caret key, it's right underneath clear. What'd y'all get? Not quite. Zero, because anything times zero is what? Zero. No, baby. I said times, you said plus. Oh, okay. I didn't say This is multiplication, honey. Mm -hmm. At least you acknowledged it. Any questions? That one's pretty straightforward. You can put any number in there and it'll work. Okay? All right. Looking at the multiplication property of negative 1. So, MP, negative 1. What do you think this is saying? Negative 1 times A equals negative A. Oh my goodness, that first half was perfect. What can we say instead of negative? It'll be the... Opposite. Anything times negative 1.
is the opposite. So let's say negative 1 times negative 5. What's the opposite of negative 5? But can we also check this in the calculator? Yes. Absolutely. So let's type that in. Negative 1 times negative 5. Did you get 5? Yes. You should have. Isn't that what we assumed it was going to be down here? Yes. If you take the opposite, it's by negative 1. Any questions there? Distributive property. Now, y'all didn't see this one so many times <coughs> at this point. Truly, this is one of the first properties that stuck for every single person because you obviously see it while you're working. You see it while you're simplifying. You see it while you're solving. It's exactly the same. So it's saying if A times B plus C equals AB plus AC, the same thing can be done with subtraction, which is A times B minus C, which equals AB minus AC. So you got to distribute to the parentheses. Great job. Which most people don't realize is multiplication. Any questions on any of these properties? No. Do they make sense? Yes. Thank you, sir. Any questions? Okay. Let's look at our first example down here. It says, name the property of real numbers illustrated by each statement. And you must state whether it's addition or multiplication when necessary. So if it's any of the top four, you have to say addition or multiplication. So if it's commutative, associative, identity, or inverse, you have to say which one. So if I'm looking at A, I have M plus 7 plus 4 equals M plus 7 plus 4. Associative of what? Associate property of what? Operation. Addition, because there's plus signs. Does that make sense? Still with me? Where's, a where's AP? A AP, associate property of addition. Oh, yeah. Yep. Any questions there? Look at B. I have 5P times 1 equals 5P. Which one? Absolutely. Identity property of multiplication. I agree. So we have IDPM. Hi, girl. So IDPM. Any questions there? Everybody still with me? Okay. Look at C. I have X plus Y plus 0 equals X plus Y. Not quite. You should... Not quite. IDPA, because it's the in identity property of addition, because all you're doing is adding zero and you get the same thing back. So it's IDPA. Any questions there? Looking at D, 3R times 2S equals 2S times 3R. Oh, uh, uh, Not quite commutative because the parentheses didn't change the order changed do you see that so it should be commutative property of multiplication thank you ladies great job for trying though jordan keep trying okay all right looking at e i have 17 plus negative 2 equals negative 2 plus 17 cpa absolutely commutative property of addition it doesn't change anything besides the actual order. 
that's it. It flips the numbers. Any questions there? Looking at F, negative 1 times negative 3 equals 3. MP1. Multiple, what was that? What did you say? MP, like, multiplication property of 1. Thank you. Multiplic multiplication property of negative 1. So MP minus 1, right? Great job. We're doing good. Looking at G, 3 halves times 2 thirds equals 1. Inverse property. The inverse property of multiplication. multiplication. So it should be I N P M. <laughs> She's on, I thought she mad. Yeah, those are um, ALC. No, uh -uh. Kendrick's are hot pink. That's from ALC because the internet's down. <laughs> Look at that H. I have 754 times 0 equals 0. Zero property of multiplication. Zero property of multiplication. How do we feel? Good. We feel good? Yes. All right. Let's look at these practices, okay? I'm going to give you five to do. I want you to do one, two, three, five, and nine. Do those, bring them to me please. Yes ma'am, not during practice, do your practice first. Don't try to call him out, did you make a hundred? Then don't call him out like that. You know better than that. Don't be disrespectful. I'm sorry, Zach. Thank you. <laughs> so, the biggest thing a lot of people messed up too was you didn't tell me either one of these two if you chose commutative, associative, identity, or inverse, which was the biggest part of the directions. You have to tell me which one it goes with, which is very straightforward. So, looking at number one, 35 times x equals x times 35. What's that? CPM, that's commutative property of multiplication. Because all it did was flip the position, didn't it? 35 was in the front to begin with, it was in the back on the last part. Make sense? Yes. Looking at number two, I have three times negative one times P equals three times negative P. What do you think happened here? What changed? What happened inside of the parentheses, right? What did this P change into? So what property happened here? MP negative 1 is the multiplication property of negative 1. The 3 didn't change, just the multiplication on the inside of the parentheses. Any questions there? Really pinpoint those things. Looking at number 3, I have M plus 0 equals M. M plus 0 equals M. IDPA, the identification property of addition. Because anything being added to zero should equal itself. Treat zero like a mirror. When you look in a mirror, you see yourself. You're reflected in there. The identity property is a reflection, essentially. Any questions there? No. Five, I have 42 times zero equals zero. Now this one, I was not too concerned on because the majority got that one right off the top. Okay, anything times zero is zero. That is written in the words on the other side of this page. Okay, any questions there? No. Okay, looking at nine, I have five times three n equals five times three n. ZPM. What was it? I'm sorry? ZPM. APM. Hey, wait, you said number five? Number nine. Oh, number nine. DPM. No. There's no such thing as a DPM. <laughs> It's APM. I heard someone say it because it's associative property. All they changed was the parentheses. Do you see that? The 3 times n was multiplying first, but now it's 5 times 3 that's multiplying first. So it's APM. Any questions there? It's because you saw that and you thought it was distribution. That is an easy thing to do. So it's okay. These mistakes happen. All right? 
Y'all have the remainder of the time to work on this practice and ask your questions. Get it done, that way you can turn it in, okay? Get it done, that way you can turn it in. I'm gonna leave my notes on the front board for you.